Oh, hello, and welcome to another Trippy Food Tales from the Vault. On today's episode, we go back to 2013 when Chef Sunny Volra of Kings Row Gastro Pub in Pasadena, California, decided to cook alpaca head cheese with alpaca heads provided by an exotic meat market. Join us, won't you? Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to Kings Row Gastro Pub. My name is Sunny. I'm the executive chef here. And uh, today we're doing something uh, very, very special. Uh, this is a very tedious and laborious process. Uh, what is known as head cheese. Head cheese now is something that dates back all the way to medieval times. It is a way that uh, a way to preserve meat. So today we have something very, very special from exotic uh, meats, of which carries uh, hundreds, you know, hundreds and hundreds of different animals uh, that they'll bring in for you. And so today we have some alpaca head, and the first part of doing your head cheese is to break down the head accordingly. So to start today, I'm going to take the alpaca head, we're going to remove the eyeballs, and we're also going to crack open the skull here. Uh, so I'm going to take my cleaver, unfortunately I do not have all the tools I need to remove the brain, but I'm going to do the best job I can. Here we go. So now we're going to take this guy out. So now we've gotten our brain out, and now we're going to go for the eyeballs. Um, something that I am truly, truly uh, finicky about. I'm not the best with them because they kind of gross me. And just the other day I got over this, so I'm kind of happy I can do it. Uh, in the past, I would probably be shaking right now and have to leave the kitchen or something uh, because it's just not, not my thing. All right, so now we've gotten the eyeball out of its socket. We've detached it from the sides. So now I'm just going to go in and cut it off. All right, guys, so we finally got our brain out and we also got our eyeballs out of the socket. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this in half. Um, you can braise these whole, but for the uh, fact that I have about uh, 13 or 14 of these, it'll be easier for me to fit it all into our uh, rondelles if I were to uh, cut them in half. So, uh, yesterday we made a brine uh, consisting of rosemary, lemon, and uh, some cinnamon. And to this, uh, I have followed uh, a very basic brine recipe of one gallon of water one cup of kosher salt and half a cup of white sugar. Uh, to this entire mixture here that we have uh, 20 quarts of, uh, you know, a little over, uh, about five gallons there, I've added four ounces of tinted cure mix to this. Now, it's very important that the cure mix is added after when the brine is chilled. So, I'll go ahead and take my cleaver again and we'll start to uh, break this in half. And I find it a little easier to start from the bottom. So now I'm going to take two towels so I don't want to get the shards uh, to cut me. So I'll take the two towels and I'll pry it apart as best as possible without everything falling apart on me. Oh, there we go. That was easier than I thought. I'll go ahead and detach the tongue to one side and see if I need to make any more cuts as necessary, but I think we got it. All right, there we go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these heads and go into the brine that we had made. This is going to be going into this brine overnight. So we're going to go one whole day in the brine, in the fridge. All right, welcome back, 
guys, uh, this is day number two. We have our alpaca heads in our brine uh, that we made yesterday. And so we're going to dis discard the brine right now. We do not need it at all. Um, and then we're going to rinse our alpaca heads uh, very thoroughly. This is a prop, you know, one of those steps that you can, you know, really skip. So it's very important that everything gets rinsed and put to the side before it goes in the brazen. Uh, we have pulled our heads out of the brine, we have uh, rinsed them, and so now what I'm going to do is uh, check our salt content. So I'm just going to take a little piece of meat off uh, the cheek here, um, I'm going to throw it into a frying pan, and we're just going to check the salt content, see if it's too high or uh, see if it's just right. Look at that beautiful red flesh so as you can see I'm not adding any salt or pepper to it because it already has all that flavor in there that's coming from the brine so we want to taste the meat uh, as is I've used a little bit of an oil blend uh, not not olive oil not butter uh, something a little bit more neutral because we're just checking the flavor of the meat Salt is on point. We've rinsed our heads, and what I've also added here is a couple of uh, trotters, smoked trotters. Uh, what that's going to help with is to add a little bit more uh, gelatinous texture. That you know what we're looking for to make head cheese. Uh, you know I want to add some in as a substitute just in case uh, there's not enough collagen here in the heads uh, to be produced in order to make our gelatin. So we're going to go ahead and just take a little bit of uh, some oil super, super hot. I like to cook as hot as possible. As you can see, we've already reached a uh, smoke point. We have a little bit of moisture going on. But as you notice, I'm not necessarily adding the garlic just yet. a banshee of a of a sizzle there. It's really really loud. And now I'll go ahead and add my garlic. As you can see, the temperature has reduced a little bit. It has happened to me. So we'll go ahead now and we'll start adding our meat right on top of the Add in our lemons. Sachet. All right, we have a, a couple cups of white wine. And we're just going to go ahead and top it off with some water. So we'll go ahead and put some foil paper down. Cover the top. Take our top, make sure it's down. So I have this oven set down to uh, 250 degrees. Uh, we kind of want to actually go low and slow. What we're trying to achieve is actually an internal uh, temperature in the rondelle uh, between, I want to say 180 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So for now, I'll have it up at 250 for this first hour so we can get it up to temperature and then I will turn it down to 200 for the remainder of the time. In about six hours, this should be ready for us to pull out. And when we pull it out, then we'll take out the, uh, the heads, we'll put them to the side, pull them down, and then we'll be able to move down uh, onto our next process.
All right, so we pulled out uh, all the alpaca heads out of the uh, the stock pot. We let it cool down, and now what we have here is we have some of the ham hocks or trotters, uh, the alpaca neck, and a bunch of the heads. So what we're gonna do now is start pulling all the meat off and trying to figure out how do we want to put this together. All of our alpaca heads were pulled down. We pulled all the meat off of the alpaca and then uh, all of the trotters. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to the stove and we're gonna check out how our stock is reducing. All right, so we have all of our mise en place ready. We have our uh, stock here that we pulled off of the stove. And what I've done here is added some of these Brunoise carrots and I'm gonna add actually a little touch more uh, for color. Uh, this is not actually here for much texture. I did blanch them off. Uh, same with uh, the parsley. It's not uh, there for much texture, but the uh, color, the vibrance, the herbaceousness that comes out of it. All right, so we have our meat here and we're about to place it in. But before I do, I'm gonna take some of this stock I'm just going to lightly paint the uh, plastic wrap that's in here. A little trick that I learned uh, a while back, but hopefully we're going to try to get some of this rough chop uh, parsley to stick to the edges a little bit. So we're just going to kind of sprinkle it in there and you may have to kind of toss it at the sides. Hopefully we can get enough that it will create a nice layer uh, around the uh, terrine. And if you need to, you can always just add a touch more in areas that it is not sticking. So we're gonna start layering our meat in here, piece by piece. And I do have a bunch of alpaca tongues that we're gonna use as inlays as well. And then we also have our cranberries and walnuts. Drop them in here. A few walnuts. And then back to the meat. As you can see, we're going to just press it down. So we have nice pockets of gelatin that will be surrounding the big chunks of meat. Okay. And now we will move on to another layer and continue to do the same thing until we get to the top. Some beautiful alpaca tongue. final layer so I'm just going to cover the bottom completely with walnuts and parsley we'll have a nice thick layer of parsley on the bottom it's again a lot of color a lot of flavor finish with our last bit of some of the stock here we go. I guess you guys are lucky that I didn't make a tandoori uh, head cheese. I don't know how that would work out um, since in my culture they don't even know what head cheese is. Push down a little bit. I'm just going to pull these in. That is it. So what we're going to do now is just take a weight, a weight the to, uh, this bottom portion here, and get it in the fridge overnight. All right, we're here on day number three. 
So we last night we put the alpaca head cheese into the fridge uh, to give it some time to set. So now it's day three and I think we're ready to take a look at it. So let's check it out and see uh, how it turned out. Oh wow. Look at this. Woo! This is beautiful. It's got a nice firm texture, right? It's a little soft but you don't want the gel to be too rubbery. If it's too rubbery, then it's a little, uh, it's hard to chew on. Wow. Look at this. I'm just gonna carefully flip this over. Get a nice, better view. Alright, we have, we have put it together and I think we're ready to go try this. Come check it out. Hey buddy. Oh my god, look at this thing. How are you doing? I'm so excited about this. Check oh my it god, out. Look at this. So we put together some alpaca head cheese. It's been a, a three day process, but I'm very excited. I can't wait to try it. I mean, it just looks so It's phenomenal. It's, it's so delicious. I mean, there's so many different things going on. So many different flavors that are playing off of each other. I think you're going to be impressed. or hopefully be impressed and enjoy. You know, the accoutrements that we have here on top is just some simple uh, cornichon pickles, some fresh red onion, and then a uh, mushroom cabbage. Oh my god, this is an amazing The meat is sweet. It is, it does have a, a, a little bit of sweetness to it. Um, but I mean, since we're using all the cheeks, uh, some of that neck meat, you know, it's, it's so easy to braise and get it nice and tender, but it's cool in the shape of the I think I'm getting some, uh, I think I'm getting some uh, sweetness from cranberry as well. And then there's that little bit of uh, like uh, the crispness from lemon. Yeah. But, oh my god, that is, that is absolutely delicious. Yeah, and then we have a bunch of different inlays in there as well. Uh, with some of the walnuts, uh, some of the uh, carrots in there. Um, and, you know, at first, you know, when we were doing this, I thought that, you know, I wasn't going to put a lot of parsley, but I'm happy I did. Add a touch more to bring out some of that creation. The part the parts you got to remember power right now. It's really good. Really good. Kudos to you, man. You did a great job. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And you know what? And as an extra little thing today, I pulled out a Rosary Dupont uh, beer, which is it's a very rustic beer, so I thought that it would pair very nicely with this rustic dish. I mean, you have the herbaceousness from the beer, you have the hoppiness in there as well, that I think that it's going to play really nicely with the herbaceousness in here, with the head cheese, and then some of that sweetness as well. Awesome. Good choice. I can see how it's kind of it's kind of lightening up that lemony zest that's in here on my palate personally. And I think that's it's such an awesome character because you know with you know sometimes I think when the beer and the food kind of melt together very nice, it helps to pop out those flavors. Chef Sunny Bora and his alpaca head cheese. This guy rocks. Cheers. Thanks for checking out Trippy Food. If you enjoyed watching that video half as much as I did making it, well then I enjoyed it twice as much as you did. And if that's the case, you'll probably like this video right here. And if not, check out this video right here. That one's a little bit different. Either way, leave a comment down below. And be sure to subscribe by clicking on the Trippy Food icon right here. Glad you could make it, and we hope to see you again soon.